Greetings and welcome. I'm Apostle Julie Hardigan, an ordained pastor, and this is Come to the Fountain TV. Today I'm going to be talking to you about when the supernatural becomes natural. You know, sometimes we can have a lot of uh, divine appointments and a lot of divine uh, experiences with the Lord. They become so natural. And a lot of people don't understand that God likes to speak to his sheep. He, uh, We are his people as if we are Christians, we are born again, baptized. We can have more of a relationship with God. So if you want to grow in the things of God, you can grow in the relationship with God, and he loves to tell you things. He loves to draw you close and share things with you, just personal things for you. So as I'm going to be talking about a relationship with God today, the name of the topic today is when the supernatural becomes natural. I have had a lot of supernatural experiences and uh, walk uh, really a tough road sometimes because I have to be obedient. And when I am obedient to God, he blesses me. There's, um, uh, let's go to the scriptures right away. If you have uh, a Bible and you want to uh, get it out and write these scriptures down, I'll give you some scriptures that we're going to be go- talking about today so you can have them written down. Um, so if I go too fast, you'll have those scriptures to go back to. Uh, so I'm talking about uh, when the supernatural becomes natural with God. It's about a relationship with God. It's about hearing his voice. So the scriptures I think I would like to talk to you about today are John 10, 27, Matthew 3, Matthew 17, Jeremiah 29, 11. You know, there's more scriptures that would apply to what I'm going to talk to you about today that I do not have pulled out. But for your f- future reference, instead of being critical, you can research the word and find those things that apply to Uh, to what I'm talking about. For example, I didn't have a scripture pulled out um, for uh, the angelic visitations that I'm going to talk about, or visitation, um, and uh, you can go and do your own research. Instead of being critical about others, I think this is really important, especially for the body of Christ. Many times people are critical of somebody, but they won't go do the scripture research. And as an apostle, I, I encourage you to research through the Word of God. Do your own homework. Don't believe your neighbor. Don't believe uh, the pastor if he's not preaching a holiness message. Uh, But you should always be listening to the Word of God or uh, reading the Word of God out loud and meditating on the scriptures yourself. So I'm a teacher of the Word of God and I impart to you what God has blessed me with. Um, This is to be a blessing to the body of Christ and to those that do not know God speaks to people that it's really important for you to know God loves you. I did not know God loved me uh, like he did. I did not know God cared like he did. I did not know God wanted a relationship. I had not read the Bible for 18 years after I gave my life to the Lord and I walked in the world doing a lot of things wrong. So as God restored me in those things when I finally had the light bulb moment, Um, Let me just share that light bulb moment when I was uh, in Fort Myers, Florida. I learned how to fish with my feet for sand dollars out in the Gulf when the tide was out. And I was walking down the beach with a sand dollar in my hand. And I said, there really must be a God because it was so designed so beautifully. As I said, there really must be a God. And then then God drew me closer to him through a divorce and those other things that... um, I re- finally read the Holy Bible the first time in my life uh, at 30, I believe I was 36 or 37 years old, and I had gotten into the church for the long haul. So as God opened my eyes through the Holy Bible, another example of hearing God's voice um, is, I'll be going through quite a few examples of hearing God's voice, um, but uh, we're going to be using John 10:27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Well, I did not know God wanted that kind of relationship with me. I was off looking, seeking to find a, the future and in all the wrong places. And as I believe other my grandmother's prayers and, and grandparents' prayers and those things probably kept me from harm in some of those areas, and God would close those doors. But I went into those areas of darkness and, and searching, and I did not know the scripture. 
My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. That's John 10, 27. That's a very important scripture for everybody to know, because God loves you. And as I started this message, um, uh, God wanted me to share an, another testimony about hearing his voice. When I read the Holy Bible for the first time, I had asked around, my, like my sister, and, and I asked her if she had ever read the Holy Bible, and she said yes, but then she does her topical research, and she read it once, and I made a decision to read the Bible for the second time, and when I did that, I heard the Lord clearly say, you will get your townhouse. Because after a divorce, I came back to the uh, Twin Cities area, and I rented a room from somebody. And in that moment, I um, had a lot of spiritual warfare, and I ended up watching a TV program, and I got to their church, and I went to their church for four years, learning about God, reading the Word of God. And the first time I read the Word of God, I made the decision to read it a second time. When I made that decision to read it a second time, I heard the Lord clearly say, you will get your townhouse. I had put a bid in on a a bank owned a HUD property uh, to buy a townhouse. And I was probably a flipper before flipping came popular. uh, And I being a retired construction worker now, I did quite a bit of, um, I'd live in the home and fix it up as I lived there after I bought it. Um, So, Hearing God's voice was so precious. When I made that decision to read the Bible for the second time, I heard the Lord clearly say, you will get your townhouse. And I did. There was only, um, I believe I won the bid, and I believe I was the only bidder on that townhouse. I believe that was 1997 or 1998. Uh, I can't quite remember the date. Um, but as I'm talking about uh this, when the supernatural becomes natural, it's important to know and be able to discern. Because with when you're still in the world and still doing worldly things, you probably are not going to hear the Lord clearly. Um, if you know his word, you can he'll speak to you in his word. If you ask him a question, he might respond in his word. And that's one way he likes to have a relationship with you and teach you and show you. Um, God is a good father, and he loves you. Uh, Another thing he uh, told me after he asked me to start using the title of apostle, he said, I created you so that I would have someone to love. That is the sweetest thing that I have probably ever heard, um, and especially coming from God. You know, I I did not have that close enough relationship to even hear that uh, tender, uh, loving voice that said, I created you so I would have someone to love. He not only created me so he'd have someone to love, he created you so he'd have someone to love. He created uh, mankind so he would have someone to love. So he would, if you have not given your life to the Lord, God is the way, Jesus Christ is the way, Jesus Christ is his son. And when Jesus died, he ascended to heaven. He promised to send us the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to talk to you about some testimonies regarding the Holy Spirit and regarding Jesus in, the, in the, some of these other scriptures. But first, I'm going to give you some background testimonies of uh, hearing his voice. At different times, I, I heard God's voice on February 23rd, 2011. After reading the Bible probably 10 times uh, and researching the scriptures and doing some really tough uh, things by obedience to the Lord, God spoke to me. And he said on February 23rd, 2011, when I was waking up, he said, I would like you to start using the title of apostle. Those were his exact words. The next day he spoke some more things to me in the morning, and it connects to what he wanted me to do. I don't want to share that right here because it's, I don't want to boast in him, uh, in myself. He just blessed me with something else. And um, then, then on June 9th, I wrote in my Bible the date that this happened. I'm using the King James Bible today. On June 9th, 2011, this is an angelic visitation I had again in the morning at 6 a.m. I wrote down at 6 a.m. Um, an a- angel came into my bedroom and 
as I was waking up, pulled a, a supernatural sheet up above my breasts. It wasn't my natural sheet. It was another supernatural sheet. And on my left hand, the angel placed a ring, and I believe it was a purity ring. And it was a, a beautiful blessing uh, from God. It's an angelic visitation. We go forward into um, after June 9, 2011. On July 21st, 2011, God spoke to me as well and said, you have the gift of miracles. And I thought, wow, it's my father's birthday. I can remember that always. It's about hearing God's voice. John 10, 27 again reads, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. The topic of today's talk is when the supernatural becomes natural. It's about having a relationship with God. When you have peace, that's another thing that God uh, spoke to me about. It's about hearing his voice, having a relationship with him. is supernatural at times. It shouldn't be because he's our creator. We should hear his voice every day. We should hear um, his heart. We should know his heart. We should know his heart for people, his love for people. I have some testimonies to share. And the first one I will be speaking to you about uh, in Matthew 3, as I think God is excited for me to talk about this topic, these other thoughts come into my head, and that's kind of part of his, the facet, one of the facets of God's character. He likes to um, share what he wants me to share. And as I'm sharing those things to the best of my ability, these other thoughts are coming into my head. So um, he wants me to share a, a lot of the supernatural facet of his character, the love that he has for his people, and how he will... Uh, do things to wake people up. He will show you that you've been called or do something special. Sometimes they get phone calls from friends and saying, God just told me this. He just shared this. And they are so excited. And we should be excited. We should be excited about the things God gives us to share with the body of Christ. And we watch, we watch um, to make sure we give God glory. And one of the ways we give God glory is to give our testimonies. And I would like to go to Matthew 3. This is uh, uh, talking about the Holy Spirit. As I touched on that a little bit ago, where Jesus, uh, when he, after he died and uh, when he did ascend to heaven, uh, he, pro he had promised to send us the Holy Spirit. And uh, an example of the Holy Spirit is praying in tongues. And tongues are still for today. Kolomba shenika yika yika shanta kila 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 kromba shena kila kila klashita sonto koyumba klasha nedi kaika 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 shanta kaika kayama laki yumba basha nedi kalaya mikishita santa kaika kaika koshi de kasi de kasi de nede de nede koshi de kasi de kasi de nede de nede koshi de kasi de kasi de nede de nede koshi de kasi de kasi de if you are a child of god and you know you should be rising up to take your place in the army of god i just encourage you in that god has a lot of work to do uh, for his people and there should be never a dull moment in your life we can be lifted up in that and know that he has a place for you he has something you can do it might just be giving your testimony to somebody. It might be sharing a gospel track. It might be just asking God, God, what do you want me to do today? Is there something you want me to change in your in my life? And then listen, because he wants to bless you. He's a good father. As we go to Matthew 3, this is talking uh, about when Jesus got baptized. Um, I'm reading from the King James Version, uh, the Benny Hinn King James Version. And um, Matthew 3, verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Esaias, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of the camel's hair and a leathern girdle, about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the region around about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Verse 7. This is talking about the preaching of John the Baptist. 
But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O you generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth forth bringeth not forth good fruit, is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. And he baptized you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Now we're going to talk about the baptism of Jesus in verse 13. We're in Matthew 3, verse 13. I'm going to give you this background scripture so that when I give you my testimony, you'll see how closely it relates to um, what God did in the Holy Bible. It's to open your eyes. It's helped you believe. To those who believe, we believe in God and we have to believe that um, the testimonies God gives us are to help people and because he loves us so much. So baptism of Jesus, uh, Matthew uh, 3, verse 13. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and, and you comest to me. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now there's two uh, separate teachings here. One is the, uh, the supernatural becomes natural, but also um, as we give our lives to the Lord, we have to adhere to the, what Jesus did. And the proper teaching for baptism uh, is when we follow Jesus, we follow Jesus' examples, not baptizing a baby, um, but you can dedicate a baby to the Lord. But uh, a person should really make a decision later in their life just as Jesus did. He was not an infant when uh, he was baptized. We follow the example of Jesus, and as later in his life, he knew he had to be baptized. So he gave us a good example. God gave us a good example. And reading the scripture again, it says in Matthew 3, verse 16, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now I have a testimony. Um, I am a seer, and as God opens people's eyes to have dreams and visions, you may have an open vision. You have to discern uh, sometimes because the devil does everything he can to attack your character and attack your gifts and the call on your life that he does want he does not want you to preach what God has you to preach he wants to prevent those things so as we overcome those things and know and get stronger in what God wants to do we have to discern to make sure these things are of God so one way we can discern is if it lines up with the word of God so this testimony that I have I served in a, a ministry, a pastor in her personal life, and, and in her ministry she had one meeting a month, and um, and it was a powerful time of where God equipped a lot of people, and and she passed away, unexpected to me. Uh, she had Parkinson's, and uh, three months before she passed away, she gave me a word from the Lord, and it was, um, God wants me to tell you delicate treasure like a diamond and so as she was ministering to me because she had just been uh, shared a few rough words with me 
God gave her the the proper words for me and to be gentle with me basically is because he said je- he said delicate treasure like a diamond so he knows those that have been uh, wounded he knows those that uh, have suffered I'm a retired construction worker and I was the first woman sworn into the International Union as a sheet metal worker and um, when God asked me to use the title of apostle he had prepared me being around all men and be uh, having a little bit of persecution, having having people that didn't understand um, women working in the field. But now that helped me, I think, a lot in my journey because now as he, I'm obedient to him, I understand that warfare. And I believe that if we can minister to uh, men, construction workers, heads of households, the beautiful uh things that God has created for them and the gift that's on their life, the men will come into the kingdom of God and they will bring their whole family. That that would be uh, a great testimony to God for uh, men that usually walk in pride that um, are afraid to go into the church or, or maybe they've walked in disobedience for many years, but God loves you. And so maybe your church is something different Uh, Maybe it's on the television, a TV uh, ministry at home. But know that God loves you, and and, um, we should all be welcome in the churches. I've been in many churches, and I've had many church hurts. We have to look at the um, importance of who God is and who God is not. Man makes mistakes. Man is not perfect. So when you go into the church, the church is not perfect, and it is for those that are imperfect. We are all imperfect uh, when God asked me to start using the title of apostle, he said, it's okay for you to make mistakes. So it's okay for me to make mistakes, and it's okay for you to make mistakes. However, uh, intentional sin is not a mistake. It's intentional sin. So there are consequences uh, for those things. And um, just as God is a good father, um, he does uh, make some changes sometimes. So if you have not given your life to the Lord, I pray that you will be able to do that. God is good. Uh, he created us so he'd have someone to love and when I meant was mentored by that pastor and she passed away she didn't have a large funeral she had a lot of friends and she meant a lot to a lot of people and she only had like immediate family come and I found out about uh, the funeral and the son allowed me to come and and there was some warfare there there was some unforgiveness in the home in the family and Um, the children didn't treat her right and um, they didn't want the God that she loved not in the way she wanted it she wanted so much for her children and grandchildren Um, but she had a lot of spiritual warfare when she passed away from Parkinson's probably had a broken heart as well Um, but as she did a great job while she was on this earth in her journey imparting to many of us when she passed away I was at the funeral And I took one of her students and his parents in my car. And there was like 23 of us. And they asked those that are not the immediate family to step away from the grave when they uh, put the casket into the ground. And so seven of us walked away. And her student that was not her her immediate family stayed out there. So we were waiting for him with my car facing um, the burial site. And his parents were in my car. And I had an open vision. And I saw after they dropped the casket into the ground, all the rest of the people walking away, I got to see the Holy Spirit fly up. Wow. The Holy Spirit, and and it was joy and different people. It was a bird, like just like uh, Matthew 3, 16, when Jesus uh, was baptized. And it says, And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. I got to see the Spirit of God in, in a dove um, uh, shape flying up at an angle. And it was, if I can remember right, it was like goldish, uh, white and pure and uh, silvery and sparkly. And it flew up and it had like people in it somehow. I don't know how to explain that. But it had people there, there that were, were watching and they were part of the service. Even though she was in heaven, we can have those uh, light bulb moments and we can have those divine visitations. We can have our eyes open, the dreams and the visions. But I encourage you to stay pure before the Lord so you can discern if it's God, you can discern if it's spiritual warfare, an attack against the enemy to stop everything that God has for you 
to impart the, the body of Christ to the bride of Christ. Jesus is coming back soon. And when he comes back, he's coming back for a, a, a bride without spot or wrinkle. So those that people are living in sin, sinful ways, drugs, alcohol, that have given their lives to the Lord, I can't guarantee that you will make it to heaven. The scriptures say uh, fornicators will not be in heaven. Uh, drunkards will not be in heaven. So I teach a tough message. Sometimes purity from the pulpit is not always easy for people to hear. I have been in churches where the pastors say, well, we have people living in sin in our church, and they're probably all over because they haven't been taught the purity message from the pulpit. And correction has not been done from the pulpit. And correction, uh, the Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says um, this, uh, let me just go there for a second. Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now, I would like to continue that topic on um, the supernatural becomes natural relationship with God um, by showing you God did not stop right there with uh, that pastor that went to heaven. She did not understand in her situation before she went home that God really did truly call me as an apostle. He asked me to start using the title of apostle. And so I did not expect her to pass away. And I was in her home and she uh, confessed some things to me about people living in her home. I believe she had three people in jail from stealing her money. And the last time I was there, I could not come home without going to the police because she had reported something that was going on in her home at that time that she was afraid. So that caused a little friction and because the police did show up at her house and I followed up uh, what I did, but that also showed the people in the home not to do what they were doing anymore. And um, it, I did not get to see her within the last three months of her life and she wanted me to help her write books. She had so many supernatural experiences, a bullet dissolved and different things like that. She wanted me to help her write the books. And three months before she passed away, she asked me to help her write five books. She had the vision for the covers and, and the content for the inside. However, she passed away and didn't do what her desire was. So as I'm trying to do what I am called to do, I'm able to use uh, some of her ministry um, so that it would bring God glory that what I did and what she did was not in vain. She equipped us and God blessed her with spiritual children and all these testimonies. But as I just shared about her burial, the Holy Spirit flying up um, a week after her burial, she got home to heaven. And heaven is, we have a choice on earth while we're living to receive God as Father, the Creator, as Jesus Christ, His Son. And Jesus is the only way. We have a choice we can receive that free gift from God or we will perish. It's not God's will that any of us perish and, and go to hell, but hell is real and heaven is real. So as you read the word of God and, and nurture yourself with the word of God, God will come and show you different things in the Holy Bible as he has me. When I had that experience a week after her burial, it lines up with the word of God. God is bigger than our understanding. We have many examples of angelic visitations. We have many examples of God speaking to people and to a donkey and through a burning bush. That God uh, wants us to know he is God. He is in control. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has planned for those that love him. I believe that's 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. Um, as I'm talking about uh, the supernatural becoming natural it's about having a relationship with God because the supernatural he wants to reveal himself to you um, there's never a dull moment because as human beings as mankind we will always be able to grow in the things of the Lord so if you're a baby Christian and you don't understand everything that's okay we're all growing um, and we are just growing into perfection and um, when we make it home, there's a lot of things God has planned for us. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has planned for those that love him. As I'm giving testimonies today about uh, things, I'm using the word of God as uh, foundation of scriptures, uh, foundational scriptures, 
to show you how it relates to what he asked me to do in, in some of the situations so that you can believe too. As a seer, that means uh, uh, we can see and, and God gives us revelations, uh, different revelations and understandings through uh, visions and dreams. A week after my mentor's burial, God filled me with the eternal love, joy, and peace. I was sleeping, and I was giggling, laughing and giggling, and the Holy Spirit in me rolled me over as I saw Jesus pass through my ceiling. On the other side was a woman, and I did not see her head, but she had a wedding dress on. And I believe that was my mentor. And she uh, is in heaven, and she knows that God asked me to use the title of apostle. So through all those things that um, uh, she understands, and I got a beautiful, there's, there's the love, joy, and peace is out of this world. And later God gave me the words to give you the understanding about um, the uh, visitation. Was they were walking on a different plane. It was like a foot below my ceiling. And I'll never forget that, and I use everything I can to talk to people about Jesus. The eternal love, joy, and peace is out of this world, and it's all worth it. If you have uh, been a Christian for a long time, and you've been downtrodden or in despair, or if you've not been a Christian and you ha have no hope, uh, there is hope in Jesus Christ. There is hope in a God that loves you. The kingdom of God is for you. Um, you are welcome in God's beloved um, and if you've had church hurts, and I uh, just encourage that um, you fi try to find another church or just let God heal those spots. There's there's no reason for a lot of the um, uh, church hurts because some of the leaders are not walking in obedience and they're wounding the very people. Now, when I go into a church as an apostle and I'm beat up by the leadership teams um, and their anger and their unforgiveness and their resentments, then that shows what needs to be purged from the leadership. Um, there's a Pharisee syndrome that um, shouldn't be in the church, but it is, and that anger is not pleasing to God. As you've, If you've gotten wounded from the uh, church, I just encourage you to know that, draw close to God because he loves you. And some of those things are going to happen in the church because people are imperfect. As I wanted to go to... Um, the scriptures to back up what I just said about uh, the the visitation I had from God. I'm going to use Matthew 17. Matthew 17 um, is talking about um, the Mount of Transfiguration. When God wants to reveal himself, he will open people's eyes. Things will happen. Supernatural things will happen sometimes. And I will just read... Uh, Matthew 17, starting at verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses, and uh, Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. That's uh, Matthew 17, verse 1 through 7. As we're looking at the scriptures, how God revealed himself again only this time through a cloud. And he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. God is pleased with Jesus. And it's actually said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. So as um, God opened um, Peter, James, and John, 
uh, their eyes to see Jesus transfigured, he also showed them people from heaven. So this is uh, um, very important for you to know that God is big. The supernatural is uh, one of God's facets of his character. So the su- today's topic is about the supernatural becomes natural. And when you have so many supernatural experiences, it's not just for you. It's, it's to share those things uh, in an appropriate way to the body of Christ or to people who do not believe yet. As I show people at times um, different religions that do not know the way to heaven yet, I demonstrate the Holy Spirit to them and open their eyes and of understanding so that they can see what the Holy Spirit can sound like if if you pray in tongues. You don't have to pray in tongues to have the Holy Spirit in you, but if you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you that lives inside of you, and you are God's hands and his feet on this earth. And as we walk through these journeys, we do the best we can with what we've been given to work with. Today's topic is about the supernatural becomes natural and um, importance, the importance of obedience is when you are obedient to God to do what he's asked you to do, then he blesses you. And it's not always easy to be obedient because a lot of the things he asks us to do is to break down walls, it's to reveal himself. It's um, when somebody has good character and somebody tries to destroy that, as I would go into the different churches, and a lot of the body of Christ has not been taught ethics. A lot of the body of Christ is doing things they shouldn't be doing, and that grieves God um, because they should know better. But the the preachers in the pulpit cannot destroy what God has purposed for himself. So uh, I am Apostle Julie Harding, an ordained pastor, and this has come to the Fountain TV. I want to leave with you with a, a testimony that God loves you so much. Jeremiah 29, 11, no matter what version uh, you read, it basically just says, he knows the plans he has for you. They are for good and not for evil. Plans for a future and a hope. God loves you, and he wants you to know Jesus is the only way, and he uh, reveals himself in many ways. If you've not given your life to the Lord, I ask that you do that today. Uh, just It will be the best decision you will ever make in your life. You can repeat the prayer after me. Father in heaven, I know that you sent Jesus to the earth. And when he lived as a man on the earth, he had temptations, but he overcame that. And when he died on the cross, He died for me. Please forgive my sin. Thank you, God, for the free gift of salvation. In Jesus' precious name, amen.